So this is May Valensky with your podcast on Tuesday the 29th of October. Today we're going to be discussing oil, gold and the Middle East, the most popular topics that is around. Uh, maybe even touch on the election, see how time goes. All right, so let's uh, have a recap of what's happened in the last week. Um, things are moving quite quickly. So Israel um, attacked Iran over the weekend, over the last weekend. Um, there was 140 planes in three sorties attacked the surface-to-air missile batteries, the ballistic missile manufacturing industrial site and some other military sites which uh, i don't know who the names of and therefore i uh, can't label so that was a strike in retaliation to iranian strike three weeks ago when they fired um, 200 missiles at israel now what israel's actually done it's uh, aimed for disabling its surface to air iran surface to air missiles therefore they were the sa-300s sa-300s and maybe sa-400s but definitely sa-300s they were the advanced surface to air missiles that were supplied by russia because russia is a ally of iran so they were a major threat now israel had to fly over particular enemy territory or hostile territory let's call it which is Syria and Iraq and then into Iran now the original plan which I stated on my Instagram and also on my YouTube channel where the original plan for Israel was to strike the oil fields of Iran now that would have sent oil sky high what happened effectively was that the Biden Harris administration put pressure on Israel in light of the upcoming elections not to strike oil because that would have sent oil up to around about $90 a barrel and that would have caused a jump in the um, official fake inflation number coming out of Washington. Remember the inflation number in Washington is running at about 2.3, 2.6% which in itself is a complete and utter gaslighting exercise to mislead the public into thinking that inflation is actually under control when it's not we'll discuss that maybe today or maybe on another podcast and um, so um, israel was going to strike the oil fields and or maybe in addition depends on which view you take the um, nuclear program in iran and that was seen by the biden harris administration as a major escalation could turn into a regional war including russia supplying necessary personnel or arms to Iran and drag in the US. So Israel diluted the attack by attacking 20 military targets. It was an extremely complex operation, but they towed the line of the Biden-Harris administration, which doesn't want to see any threat at all on the ele- upcoming elections that could kick them out of the White House. Now, the management in Washington has been particularly poor over the last four years, in my opinion, especially economically, uh, ever since they took over from Trump. The last year of the Trump administration, 2020, was also pretty bad. That's because of COVID, um, but also could have been a degree of mismanagement there to be objective on the whole setup. Um, so going back to Israel, Iran. So Israel stri- uh, took a strike at Iran. Now the question is, is Iran going to retaliate? Well, one thing for sure, the Iranian military capability has been degraded. That is certain. And they also they have limited now supply of ballistic missiles, where before they had unlimited supply because they had a manufacturing industrial output on ballistic missiles and that's going to take at least two years to recapture that lost capacity so for the next two years Iran's going to be very limited in what missiles they can fire and they're going to be more economical and have a ballistic missile budget as to how many missiles they're going to fire in retaliation at Israel um, in addition to that their number one proxy in Lebanon Hezbollah is being um, hammered um, that was their that was their right side protection as they saw it and that's gone so they've got a problem now with the proxies because Hezbollah could be essentially dismantled 
um, if, it's, if, it, if Hezbollah was dismantled, that would seriously weaken Iran. Remember, Iran has a official, under sanction, official export quota of 900,000 barrels a day of oil. But considering that they control Iraq, not officially, but unofficially, with the Shiite militias and the Shiite ministers, because Iran is aligned, or Iraq is aligned with Iran, because they're both Shiite uh, Muslims, Islamic Shiite following, then Iran's got control of the Iraqi exports. And when you look at Iran's illicit exports, which is about 3 million barrels, or I should say 2 million barrels, then you've got 3 million barrels being exported from Iran legally and illegally. And then you've got Iraq's other um, 2 million barrels a day. So you've got 5 million barrels a day being exported through the Iranian axis. Now that makes it the number fifth or sixth oil exporter globally. Now, if that was to be knocked out, where it was Iran or maybe Iraq, then that would cause oil to go to around about $152 a barrel, which is huge. And that would definitely scupper any chances of Washington gaslighting you regarding inflation. Moving on to gold and oil, so oil came off as a result of the diluted attack by Israel on Iran, and therefore oil came off about, US oil came off about 6.5% and could actually be floating further south. So we could see oil come off even further. What's interesting to note is that gold is continuously to rise. So even today, on Tuesday, 29th of October, gold has touched a 27.53 level. Now, if you do follow me on Instagram and YouTube, I have, and, t and uh, Twitter X, uh, you will see that I've been constantly saying that gold is going to move to 27.50. It has, it's past it. So it looks like it's going to go to 28.50. That's my next target for year end, 28.50 on gold. So I can see gold moving even higher and oil, US oil coming down to around about the $66 level, $65 level. So we could see further falls in oil and further rises in gold, even though on a technical basis, oil looks like, gold looks like, looks like it's exhausted on a technical basis at these levels and could pull back quite a lot. Just moving on slightly to the election, because that's very, very topical and it'd be unwise of me not to mention it, at the moment, according to the polls, if you believe them, uh, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are neck and neck, 50-50. That just goes to show how polarized the US is. There's those who absolutely love Kamala Harris and think she's brilliant. And there's those that love Donald Trump and think he's brilliant. And the other 50% are those people that think Kamala Harris is a, at a waste of time and the other 50% think that Donald Trump is a complete criminal, rapist and a waste of time. So the US is really split in the middle and that is going to be very interesting how it bears out in the actual um, election results. Um, I don't really know who's going to get in. I prefer economically that Donald Trump gets in. I think he's got better policies. And if Kamala Harris gets in, I think that could be a a nail in the coffin for the US economy because she simply does not understand economics or geopolitics. So it's neck and neck. Um, there is definitely tension there. Um, some of the comments coming out when Donald Trump makes comments are literally cringy. Um, that, I don't know why he just doesn't keep his mouth shut, but he says things that sometimes are very, very cringy, but that's Donald Trump. What can you do about it? Um, so overall, the most, the biggest event coming up is the election. I will do a podcast on that coming up soon in the next week or so. In the meantime, gold looks like it's going to continue moving higher and oil looks like it's going to continue moving lower. That's it for now. You can, you can download this on Google, on Spotify or, pod, or any other type of podcast platform that you prefer. You can also follow me on Instagram and on YouTube and on Channel X. Okay, catch you later.